Good morning and welcome to the Daily Share where we pray the word of God and bring it to life in our lives. 1 Samuel 5 verse 6 to 8. The Lord's hand was heavy on the people of Ashdod and its vicinity. He brought devastation on them and afflicted them with tumors. When the people of Ashdod saw what was happening, they said, The ark of the God of Israel must not stay here with us, because his hand is heavy on us and on Dagon, our God. So they called together all the rulers of the Philistines and asked them, What shall we do with the ark of the God of Israel? They answered, Have the ark of the God of Israel moved to Gath? So they moved <clears throat> the ark to Gath. And when you carry on, on in that chapter, when you keep reading, uh, you'll find that even when it got to Gath, the ark of God caused trouble there. The people there were poor, were, were, you know, they were unwell, they had tumors, they were, there was just unrest um, until eventually, and then they tried to pass it on to another place and the people of that place refused. And the final verdict was, no way, let's just send it back uh, to where it belongs. So for me, this is, at the end of the day, God is the God of everyone. He's the God of all those who will uh, receive him right? Jesus said, come unto me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. And that's an open invitation to everybody. In this case, this was, uh, at the time, this, this, this was very much about this nation and that nation and that nation. Um, and obviously God was with the children of Israel at the time and, and the other nations, they worshiped other gods. And clearly here they worshiped their God, uh, Dagon and they were trying to pass this statue on because they could see that it was causing sickness among sorry they were trying to pass the ark of God forward because it was causing sickness among them and and someone may be saying well see so God only favors his people what about the people around him it's not so much about people as it is about the fact about the fact that they were you know they were trying to they held the children of Israel captive or they conquered the children of Israel and they held the Ark of God. They more or less held that Ark captive. And at the time, wars were fought. It wasn't so much about nation against nation. It was also God against God. So it was a matter of if we conquer you, then our God must be stronger than your God. And normally the people, the conquered people would start to fear the, the God of the conquering nations. So these, this is what these people, this is what this nation, these nations were doing. Anyway... Needless to say, they, they they tried to hold the Ark of God. They couldn't hold it. They they tried to hold the Ark of God alongside other 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 um, altars. Sorry, alongside altars of other gods. It doesn't work. Um, God is God all by Himself. He will not be set next to another god. He will not share he said in um isaiah 42 verse 12 he said i am the lord and that is my name i will not yield my glory to any other or i will not yield my glory to idols and this is precisely what he meant when you put the ark of god uh, side by side with other gods you are making a collection of gods and you are counting the you're counting god the father amongst other gods it, it just doesn't work god will not have that and this is why the people suffered, the other people that captured um, the Ark of God. And as soon as they let the Ark go, well, this is why they let the Ark go, because they didn't want to die. Okay, so they understood pretty simply that, oh, we are suffering because of this Ark. This shouldn't be here. This God will not have this. He'll, he'll not be treated like So even though the children of Israel have been conquered, God is still God. And that's the same with our lives. You know, regardless of the lives that God's children live on this earth in, in this in this day and age, uh, God is God. In spite of what we see, in spite of what we go through, in spite of what we experience, God is still God and he deserves that glory and he deserves that honor. And like he said, he will not yield his glory to any other. But also, I think for me, what's more exciting is also when you raise the, an altar of God. So when symbolically the ark here was it was the altar it was an altar of god but now now that now that jesus has died for us now that we've received him into our hearts and we've he's now the lord and is now the lord of our lives you you in yourself uh, if you repent and live right and live and, and accept that righteousness of christ and live a clean life live that that means live a life of repentance and, and li just live a life of searching for god and seeking god you in yourself especially when you go on a prayer and fast uh, prayer and fasting period you are in yourself raising an altar to god because you are sacrificing when you when you go on on, on a fast you are sacrificing right 
So you are raising an altar to God and you are submitting to him and worshiping him and concentrating on him at the time and doing away with everything else. You're raising an altar to him, which means other altars um, that are not of God, they have, to, they, they, you know, they, they have to give in. So if there are altars raised against you to stop you from making progress in any particular venture or to stop you from achieving, say, your exams. I gave an example of, of writing exams the other day. Whatever altars are raised against you, wherever they are, some of them are even in your bloodline. Some have been passed down from our forefathers. The unfortunate thing, and these would be generational curses, the unfortunate thing about generational curses or uh, members of a family, uh, you know, sort of uh, being idolatrous is that those idols only serve them. And, um, they, they, you know, they, 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 to the to the at the expense of everybody else in that family. And so you may find that someone is servicing an altar so that they may get a blessing. Well, they, they think it's a blessing from, from, you know, from the kingdom of darkness. There's no such thing as a blessing from the kingdom of darkness. It's a curse. They'll make things available for that person, but everybody else around that person is cursed, right? And so, um, but when you raised your altar of God, those other altars won't stand they cannot stand but you need to make sure you're doing it right that is by you know cleansing your heart you have to be walking in the spirit of god which means you have to be walking in in peace and in forgiveness and in love uh, and every time you have that feeling or that sense of of pride or uh, unforgiveness or resentment or any of those um, negative remember the bible says if i regard iniquity in my heart he will not hear me uh, every time you regard any of those negative thoughts you just quickly repent and get rid of them just refuse to tolerate them refuse to let them stay refuse to let them form into a thinking pattern in your mind just let them go let those thoughts go stick to seeking god which means stick to living your life the way god wants you to live your life and that means living in peace and harmony with everyone okay um it, you know the the, uh, the the bible also says love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you i find uh, to help someone perhaps who struggles with with you know letting go or, or forgiving people who you know there are you know the, the truth is life happens and sometimes you look at some situations and you think oh my gosh i can't i can't forgive that and i'm trying to forgive it i'm just struggling to forgive that ask the holy spirit he will help you and also, if you follow the instruction of love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you, uh, you know, seek, just seek, pursue love for those people. You can even concentrate on your enemies and just pray for them. Pray for them and, you know, ask God to, to just shower them with grace and mercy. The, the more of that you exercise in yourself, the, the more of the love you feel. And yes, you that feeling of, oh, but they did this. I remember the time so-and-so did that. How dare she? You, you then overcome that feeling with, um, you know, uh, with prayer. Uh, just overcome it with prayer. Uh, pray for forgiveness for thinking that way and, and pray for them. Keep showering those people in prayer. You, you're not physically with them. You're not physically with them to shower them with love. That may be the case or may not be the case. But every time... It, 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 when you are being unforgiving when you're when you're being unforgiving towards people it doesn't mean it's towards people you're with like within it can be people from your past right it can be people you've lo you've long lost contact with you can love them by praying for them there is no bigger love th than that uh, the bible says there's no greater love than than what did you say now jesus said something about the greatest love is when someone lays their life for their friends even when you go on your fast you know, some of that fasting can be dedicated towards them. So that means you're making a sacrifice. You are going without food for your enemies. You're praying for them. And as you continue to do that, you find that your love, because you start to see exactly what they are going through, start to see things from their point of view, and you do away with those feelings of, well, they did this, and you, you get yourself away from focusing on what they did and just see them as another child of God and what they're going through. It helps you. It, I'm just saying it helps. I find it helpful personally. It helps me focus on praying and really genuinely feel, you know, feel, you know, feel, feel compassion for my enemies when I know exactly what they're going through. So that's an exercise that helps. But Jesus did say, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. All these are in effort to raise an altar towards God, guys. And when you raise God's altar, no other altar can stand against it. And so those petitions you're praying for, you are coming against every entity of darkness that is standing against your destiny, basically. Thank you for listening. God bless you. Have a lovely day. Goodbye.